Thank you so much for joining us today at Christ Point Church. We want you to know we're real people living real lives, serving a real God. We hope that you enjoy today's sermon by our lead pastor, Steve Qualls. Welcome home. As goes the king, so goes the country. Now, now you can you know you can always say that of every of every of every organization that has a leader in any type type of leadership. Uh, um, you know, we used to say Peggy would, would say that uh, you know if the head gets a, if the leader gets a cold, the the, the body gets pneumonia, and uh, so as goes the king, as goes the leader, as goes the president, as goes the uh, 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 the elected officials, so goes the country. The future and the well being of an organization is found in the heart of the leader or its leaders. If that's where we're going. We're going to find the future and the well-being. Now, we can individually find ourselves in blessings and cursings, but as a whole, the future of an organization. And today we're going to be pray, we're, we're going to be spending some time focusing on our, our country. So the future, the future and the well-being of an organization will be found directly in the heart of its leader or of its leaders. So we have we have uh, entered into three days, uh, three days, three three weeks of prayer and fasting. This is what we went into. This is the heart of Christ Point Church. This is what we did. We sit at a table and we just kept talking about it, and we just kept feeling from the Lord. We kept praying about it. We spent some some several weeks praying about how God would take us to and through this prayer and fasting. And this is what God laid on our heart. Three, three prayers every day. Now, if you haven't been praying those prayers, it's not the end of the world. We, we challenge you to do so. There, you find them on our app. Go to the website. Click on prayer and fasting. And there they are. Early morning, noon, and afternoon. So we want you to pray those with us. Tina and I sat on our back porch this morning. We did two things. We tried to figure out again how to set the alarms to make sure we're, we're not forgetting or we're not getting too busy. And somehow or another, my alarms aren't telling me this stuff. And... Uh, so, and then we sat on our back porch and we prayed this, this morning's prayer and we prayed together over our, our, our families and our church. But this is what we're praying and this is the sermons that we're laying out exactly to coincide with those prayers every day. Three prayers every day, three sermons. One is for the family. We preached that last week. That morning prayer is for the family to pray over your family. It, it includes your lives, your marriages, your, 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 your children, your grandchildren, your well-being, your jobs and your better jobs, your decisions that you make, family time to pray together. Our, our, our sermon last week was about family. This week we're, we're, we're praying and, and we're seeking and we're, and we're preaching about the nation. We, we prayed that prayer at noon. Our leaders, our, our elected officials, we chose them. They didn't choose us. We chose them. And I don't care if it's, ever, if it's all the way to the, to the White House or if it's, if it's as, as, as uh, uh, small as uh, one of the leaders in our very small town of Ten uh, Sparta, Tennessee. Uh, or Smithfield, Tennessee. We pray for our leaders, our elected officials, our president, our state and local leaders. We pray for them. And this is how I pray. Lord, if they are not, if they, are, if they don't need to be there, if they're the evil voices, remove them. Remove the ones that need to be removed. Give the backbone and the anointing to the ones who are serving you. And you know what, Lord? I pray that you, you start developing more, more leaders that, that will serve you because we've got to get back to where we once were. So the other prayer and the other focus is the church. How are we going to be what God has called us to be in this house, in these, in, in, in these towns, in these, in these locations that God has sent us? God's favor upon us. We pray that in the evening prayer. Our teams, our pastors, our campuses... Our, our, our children's teams, our, our worship teams, our, our, our hospitality. You know, people clean. Pe people come in here that serve and they clean and they make sure that you have a presentable uh, uh, place to come into, a location that you feel good and you feel clean to come into or that feel has been clean to come into. All the way down to every single thing from the top all the way down to there is no bottom. So, so from the top and we're lateral from there. So well, let me just challenge you with this thinking. What if, what if the future of our nation rests upon this church in this 21 days? Man, think about that. Think about that. What if the future of this nation rests on this church during these three weeks? 
It's not our job. I just want to say this. It's not our job to criticize, to condemn, or to armchair quarterback our elected officials. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I fuss a lot too. Uh, it's not our job to criticize, to condemn, or to armchair quarterback, to, to be a Monday morning quarterback. It's our responsibility to pray for them. Because we can, we can spit and spat all we want to. Is it going to make a difference? What's going to make a difference is the time that we spend in prayer over them. I'm going to give you an example of that. My pastor, whom, whom served so diligently and wonderfully and, and uh, uh, was just such a, a magnetic person to be around, uh, and I served under him, and I was, I guess you could call the number two in the house. And uh, I love the job. I love the responsibility. We, we did this for 12 years, and I love to re reiterate what he said. We never had a, a harsh word. We never had uh, a disagreement. And that was because of his, his leadership, and that was because that I respected his leadership. And, uh, and uh, so there was a men's, there was a men's outing uh, going, going to happen in a, a little bit of a conference, and the men, some of the men were leaving. And uh, my pastor, wouldn't, he wasn't able to go. So at the last minute, I was able to cut, cut short some work. And I ran in there and I said, hey, do you care if I go along with you? No, we'll wait on you. So I ran home, threw some, threw some clothes in a bag, and I took off. And I noticed something. I didn't do it for this reason, but I noticed something. I noticed we got uh, no more than, we were going to Chattanooga, I think it was. So we're no more than, than 45 minutes from, from, from here. And we're, we're traveling to Chattanooga. And all of a sudden, it was kind of, that, that was a bigger bus, and you could sit sideways and all that stuff. And Because uh, if it wasn't packed, then you could sit sideways, and I think there was about 20 on there. And uh, all of a sudden, one started questioning the pastor, why does he not do this? Why does the pastor not do this? Why does the pastor, why does he do this? And I just took my opportunity, and I just kind of walked up there and interjected. I said, can I just say something here? Can I just interject here? Your job's not to criticize your pastor. You're, you'll, you won't be loved by anybody more than you're loved by this man. Your job's to pray for him. Your job's to lift him up. And your job's to trust that God is speaking to him. Not, through, not to you, but to him. And you don't know that he's not already on whatever you're bothered by. So we finished. And I, I mean, I just kind of had to do that. It was my responsibility. And I, and, and I took it. We got there, and one of the men came off and said, Pastor, can I pull you aside? I said, yes. He goes, thank you. I would, have, I would have jumped on board. I would have ruined my weekend, and I would have left here negative about my pastor if it hadn't been for you. I, just want, I mean, I'm not saying it's all about me. I'm just saying our job is not to armchair quarterback. Our job is not to criticize or condemn. Our job, and I know we have a lot of elected officials in this country, but our job is to pray for them. And sometimes... I'm going to be one that says I fall into this category. Sometimes I really don't want to. You know, sometimes I don't want to pray they make the right decisions. Sometimes I want to pray uh, uh, like David prayed, God break the teeth of the wicked. I, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm being real. I'm, I'm being who I am. So in prayer and fasting over our nation, as we're doing, we must realize the future of the nation lies in the heart of its leaders. It lies in the heart of its leader. So I want to read Psalms chapter 33. Verse 12. I want you to look at this with me. Blessed is the nation, or blessed is the nation, whose God is the Lord, the people of whom he has, cho or he has chosen as his heritage. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. There's a lot of statement right here. There's a lot of stability right here. There's a lot of foundation right here. If we are going to be blessed as a person, as a family, as a church, as a nation, we better be building our foundations up on the Lord because everything else is not going to be able to make it. Everything else is going to crumble. Blessed is the nation whose Lord is the, whose God is the Lord. I want you to look at something with me. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Very familiar. One of the very first uh, scriptures I ever got in my heart and never left. This is what this scripture says. If my people, this is God speaking to Solomon. If my people, which are called by my name, if these people will humble themselves and they, and they will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins and then I will hear the, heal their land. I want you to notice something with me. There's a part one and there's a part two in this, in this scripture. 
God says if. Now I want you to know something. When you see the word if, that's a condition. That means it's all on you. You know, it's like, well, uh, mom and dad, can we, buy my, can we buy me a new car? Well, if you work for it and earn the money, we can. See, all of a sudden now the if has been, it's a conditional, uh, uh, I guess you call it a, a conjunction, where it comes back on you. It's on me now. So the first part is our part. This is our part. If my people... Now, this is the thing. If you call yourself a Christian, then you have a responsibility to pray for people who are in leadership. You have a resp responsibility to pray for your family. You have a responsibility to pray for this church and pray for the, its pastors and to pray over yourself. So here's the thing. If my people... Now, this is, you know, he says right before that, hey, there may come a time when, 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 when I dry up this or I, I bring disease upon this. You know what? But if my people... If my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, notice it's, it, the conditions on us. If we will do this, if we will call on his name, if we will humble ourselves, because I'm going to tell you something, pride comes before destruction. If we will humble ourselves, and if we will pray and seek his face, and we will turn from our wicked ways. So there's a few conditions there. It's not just I want to pray and I want to continue to live the way I'm living. It's not that I want to pray if my people will pray, but they've got to do some things here in order to make that prayer have energy. And if we don't do those things, our prayer does not have any energy. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, all of a sudden, there's a whole section that lies in, in, in our ballpark. God says, there's your part. Now, I'm going to wait for you to take care of your part. I'm going to wait for you to get inside your circle and pray for rain. Because inside that circle, you have no idea what I'm going to reveal to you. You have no idea what I'm going to show you. You have no idea what kind of restitution you're going to wait, you have to make. You have no idea what kind of repentance it takes to get inside that circle. Once you're finished, I'll be over here. This is the way I see this scripture. I'll be over here. I've got a part two that goes with your part. But until you finish your part, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. He says, if my people will do these things, then part two, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. You notice God just kind of takes care of things like that. You know what? You've got some things that you have to do. You have to humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your evil ways. And you know what? Then, boom, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it because this is what I want to do. I want to bless my people. I want to bless my people. Let me just kind of break this down, what's happening. Upon the completion of the temple, the house of God, that David envisioned. Now David had this idea, I'm going to build a house for God. But God had a different idea. God said, David, it's a great idea. David, it's wonderful. David, I love it. David, you're a man after my own heart, but you're not the one going to do it. Your son's going to do it. David, you're not a builder. You're a warrior. Warriors set tones for builders to be able to build. Warriors get the, city re the, the, the people ready and the city ready for the building. Your son's going to build it. So Solomon, David's dead and gone. Solomon has built the temple and now he is dedicating the temple. He has spent some time in prayer before the people. He is in the midst of the people. He's built a makeshift platform, stood upon it and people paid attention. I'm going to tell you, people showed up. They lined up because they respected what was being done. They lined up. So they, uh, uh, Solomon, here he is before the Lord and he says the future of the nation. God's told him the future of the nation rests and lies in the heart of one man. And that's you, Solomon. That's you. Your nation will be blessed or cursed because of who you are. The king. I want you to notice God spoke over the nation concerning the people and concerning their blessing. Now I want to show you something else. Concerning their blessing or their cursing. See, God says, look, you have the choice. Because I have an if at the beginning of this scripture. If, if you want to remove the cursing from your life, 
or the curse from your life. If you want to walk in the blessing, then there's something that has to happen. So you notice God spoke to him over the, or spoke to the nation concerning the people, concerning their blessing or their cursing, and he spoke that verse to the king in a dream. Now God gave the dream to the king, and, he, and the king represents the people. He gave the king to the dream, the king represents the people, the people made up the nation. So as goes the king, so goes the nation. So you say, I, I just want to be honest with you. I just want to be honest with myself. What can I do? Believe me, I've said this. What can I do? What can we do as one small church in one small town in the middle of a, uh, of a town that is so, in, so insignificant in the middle of a state that is not a battleground state for election votes? What, what can we do? What can we do that our voice would be heard? How can we pray as the few to change the course of a nation? How can we do this? What, what's our job? How do we do this? And that is true. We may say that. We probably have every right to say that. But we can pray. We may not be able to pray to move the nation, but we can pray and fast together as the few for 21 days and beyond. And we can pray as the few to change the heart of the few who have, we have chosen to lead the many. So the heart, uh, the future of, of an organization lies in the heart of the king. So as goes the king, so goes the nation. Let me tell you about a, 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 a little girl. Let me tell you about a young girl. Not a little girl, but a young girl. I want to kind of tell you how this, this lays out. She found herself in a situation. See, I, I, said this, I said this yesterday. I said it to Sam. I said it to Tina. I said, when we walked into here seven years, two months, and 20 days ago, and we talked to Miss Rosie and Byron and Al and Grace and, and, and Gwen and, and the Wiggins, and we talked to them right back there, there's something that I never told anyone. Some of these people are older than you. You're their pastor. You're going to fall in love with these people, and at some point, you're going to have to bury them. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm too soft-hearted. You cry, I'll cry. I'm. I, I'm not the strong one in the hospital room. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I'm going to be the real one. That's all I can be. So, I found. I find myself telling Byron yesterday. Joshua was told by God five times in, in chapter one to be strong. I said he didn't tell him that because he was going to move or he was going to build massive buildings or he was going to be a warrior and, 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 and there was going to be enemies come against them, outnumbering them. He told him this because he was going to have to remove the very ones in his own family, his own people. I think that's why he told him because the hardest things were, have to, were going to have to deal with the people he loved. God's not telling us to be strong. I was telling Byron, God's not telling you to be strong because... He wants you to be physically strong. This is the toughest decision you'll ever make to say, take my wife off that ventilator. Because she's told me she didn't want to be there. So take her off. You know what? That was strong and that was create, courageous. And I stood there, my arms around him, him with his arms around me and his head tilted over on my head and it broke my heart. Because I saw myself. It goes by fast. I saw myself. I looked at him, and I don't know, 55 years, I think they were married. And I think to myself, it went by like that. I don't want it to go by like that, but I want to be as productive and as, as, as energetic in prayer as I can be during that time. So, this young girl, she finds herself in that strong and courageous category where she's gripping a hold of her people with one hand, and she's gripping a hold of the king with the other, and she is the link that cannot break. See, evil had made its way into the inner courts of the king. It had made it right in. The king's royal advisory had convinced the king. I mean, just, just totally uh, uh, twisted his mind. And, and it convinced the king that they had to entirely wipe off the face of the earth an entire nation of people known as the Jewish people. Known as the Israelites. You've got to do this. You've got to wipe off the face of the earth. They are rebellious people. They need to be exterminated. And the king believed the lie. He bought into the lie. He even ordained the annihilation. And the evil plan was set into motion. 
right down to the very king's signature. The king would have signed the signature today. We would have signed, the, our president would sign an executive order today. The king put a signet ring on it. It was law and it couldn't be changed. See, the new law had been passed and the Jews were scheduled to be exterminated in the coming months on a day that was chosen by lots and, and, and the news reached this young girl. See, there was something about this young girl. She was not just some young girl. She was a young Jewish girl and not just some young, beautiful Jewish girl. She was the young, beautiful Jewish queen to the king. He didn't know that she was a little Jewish girl. He didn't know this. He has just pronounced a death sentence upon his very queen. So this little Jewish girl had to change the mind of the king. She's holding the king in one hand and her people in the other. I've got to be the link that changes the mind of the king, changes the nation, and saves the people. I've got to be that one, and I'm just a young girl. You know what? I just wanted to pass through this and just not, not be... Not, not upset the apple cart that much. I just wanted to go to church. I just wanted to attend and leave. I just, I just wanted my kids to be involved in a, in a children's ministry. I just, wanted, I just wanted to come in and hear some good worship. I just, wanted to be, I just wanted some donuts and coffee. You know what? I just wanted to slide through. But her very own cousin said, Look, if you don't do this, help's going to rise from somewhere else. But you're not going to be exempt from what's about to happen. So this is what she did. She wrapped everything that was about to happen into three days of prayer and fasting. Three days of energetic prayer, effectual and fervent. She wrapped it around and she said, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go tell the people, tell my family, me and my maidservants will do the same. And we're not going to eat anything or drink anything. And we're going to pray and seek the Lord for, for three days. And then I'm going to go see the king. You say, what's the big deal? You know, I watch movies. The queen's sitting right there. The king's sitting right there. She kind of runs everything through him. He's kind of like a puppet weak guy anyway. It wasn't like that in those Persian days. See, for her to go into the king and to visit the king uninvited was a certain death sentence. And there was only one reprieve, one way out. And that was if the king said, I accept you in. And if you weren't accepted in, you know, you just got to be praying and fasting that the king's not having a bad day. You just got to be praying and fasting that somebody hasn't said, you know, I'm not so sure about her. I'm not so sure she's not in love with someone else. You know what? You just got to be praying and fasting that somebody's not speaking smack into his ears right before she comes in. Because if she goes in uninvited, it is a certain death sentence. And only, the only way out is for the king to say, wait a minute, I accept you in. He extended a scepter. That was a big, nice thing that he carried, I guess. And he extended the scepter and he said, I invite you in. That was his invitation. She took the risk. The king in, she entered the king's chamber. He accepted her in. She revealed the evil plot and her people were saved. See, this whole story is recorded in the book of Esther. If you haven't read, read the book of Esther, golly man, it's good. You got to do that. Read the book of Esther. Let's look at Esther chapter 4 verse 16. And I want to go back to this, to, to, this, to this time of prayer. This is what she says. So go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa. Go, 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 go do this and hold a fast on my behalf. And do not eat or drink for three days or nights or day. And I and my young women, my maidservants are going to do the same. We're going to fast right along with you. Then I will go to the king. And even though it's against the law, and if I perish, I perish. I'm going to die anyway. So I'm going to go into prayer. And I'm going to go into fasting. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to try everything that I have within me to save the, the lives of, of my people from extermination. A day had been set. And when this day comes, if you didn't kill every Jewish person in, that, that was in, in your house, in your land, you would be killed. So it was a law. They had to do it. So this is what an example of changing a nation looks like. It looks like this in, in Esther chapter 4 verse 16. This is what it looks like. As goes the king, so goes the country. The king is the only one that can make that decision. Esther knew that. She says, if you'll pray with, if you'll pray with me, if you'll want to fast to me, we'll make a difference. We change the course of our nation. This is how we're going to change the course of our nation. And if you ask me, do I believe it can happen? I, yes, with all my heart. Do you ask me if I think it's going to be hard? Yes, I think it's going to be hard. Do you ask me if I think that our nation's a little too far gone? Yeah, I kind of do, to be honest with you. 
I'm sorry, I kind of do. I feel like our nation has just about gone too far. When we ordain and celebrate killed and killing children before they're born, we've gone way too far. We've gone way too far. We've set up an, a Molech idol and we're, we're, we're killing our babies in the belly of, a, of, of an idol. So uh, that's just one thing. So if we're going to change the course of a nation, then this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to go back to last week, James chapter 5. We're going to have to become effectual and fervent in our prayers. We're going to have to pray a prayer that creates energy. That's how we're going to have to pray. We're going to have to pray that includes fasting. That says, every time I feel myself grumbling in my stomach, Lord, I'm praying and believing that you're doing something. I'm praying and I'm believing that the sacrifice that we are making as a whole is making a difference in our community, in our town, in the lives of people. You know what our number one job here is, and we're not going to waver from it, is to seek the lost and get them saved. That's the number one thing we're going to do. But you know what? We're also going to pray for people. We're also going to lift people up. So that includes fasting. There are 328 plus million people in this USA. 328 million people. And, 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 and your prayer just may not be heard. Probably won't be heard by, by those 328 million as a whole. In, in all likelihood, it won't, be, it won't be heard by half of them. Your prayer's more than likely not even going to be heard by a one half of 1% of those. But... Your prayer can change the few that lead the 328 million. That's, you know, it, it, it's, it's the old saying, when a bear attacks, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. So we don't have to outrun the bear, we don't have to catch the bear, we just have to pray for the people who are in charge. That's what we have to do. Your prayer can change the, 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 the few. The future of the people will be found in the heart of the king. It's going to be found in the heart of the king. Before God begins judgment or brings judgment, before God brings judgment, he always brings warnings. Now, some will say 9-11 was a warning. I'm not, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. Some say pandemic is a warning. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. But before God brings judgment, he brings warning. So, is God sending our nation warnings to repent? See, that's my question. Is God sending... Our nation warnings to repent. Because I think we need to be paying heed and listening and, and reading and watching and praying in a fashion that's going to make a difference. Hello again and thank you for tuning in. I pray that today's sermon has spoken to your heart and has ministered to you well. Uh, we just want you to know that uh, we have two locations. One at our Sparta campus, our main campus at Sparta on the square in Sparta. And our second campus is at Smithfield behind Ace Hardware. And we would love for you to call Christ Point Church your church home. And uh, if, you're, if you're viewing this and you can't get, get in, uh, to church and you feel like you, you want to be a part of the church, then you can always be a part of the church. Just just drop us a note and let us know that you enjoy uh, being on board with us. And if you'd like to give and be a part of the ministry, then uh, you can do that by, by just sending a check to one of the locations at 614 Murphy Street, Smithfield, 13 Liberty Square in Sparta, and uh, we'll get you on the roll. We just love you so much. And you can download the Christ Point Church of Tennessee app and you can give online. So we are real people. We're living real lives and we're, we're serving a real God. And we just want to tell everyone, welcome home. We're so glad that you tuned in with us. Welcome home.